It's Wild Card Wednesday, and I've got to pull something out of my hat because the project I was working on I was doing a product review. That product just completely failed, so we're doing one on the workbench. That's uh, what I spent all my time doing yesterday, so then I had to squeeze in the product review, and then that went bad, so then I didn't have a video, so I said, Self, let's talk about the workbench. I did a bunch of uh, searching online for images and plans and things on the internet for doing a workbench and there's various designs and things that I like and so I came up with this one here and I wanted to base it on that because I really like the drawers that I had in mind but I also wanted some open space if you have too many drawers they just get full of junk anyway I also like the way that these were done and so I incorporated that into my design and then combined it with the free materials that I got I got this for free, I got this for free I got the posts on the ends for free, so I had to pay for the 2x4s, and I had to pay for screws, and some wood, and that's just about it. And then this power strip I've had sitting around for quite a while. I have a really limited number of power outlets in my garage. Couldn't find out that's common nowadays. Nobody does anything in their garage. We're losing our ingenuity or something. So many businesses start from a garage. You want to have power to start your business, and that's going to come from the power outlets. From time to time. And we're just going to do a really quick video so that I make my wild card Wednesday happen, but also to give some useful information. How high do you build a workbench? I'm sick and tired of having benches be just a little too low. I'm six foot three, and so what's a workable height for someone's too low for me, basically. I like them up a little higher. That way I can have everything right here. I like to have a tripod, so there's going to be something to mount it by. Um, I did a work light, it's LED, uh, but I really like the way it turned out. I've got my bench grinder, which I've been missing like crazy. I use this all the time before, and so I've got that, and it's set up where I can take it on or off. I just basically drop the bolts in the holes, and that keeps it from wandering around the table. See how easy this is, so you try to do it on camera and rush it too fast. And so toolboxes fit underneath, tool bags, things that I throw in the back of the truck to do a mobile repair or whatever if I'm going to do that. I have a big open shelf space for larger tools like saws and things. In the meantime they're up in overhead storage. I do a bunch of my kit tool things in these drawers and then uh, stuff like soldering supplies and things of that nature will be in these drawers. I set up so I have a place to build on things. You've got to have that, hold it, beat it, work it, drill it. I've got my drill press here and all my drill bits set up over here. So I used to have a bunch of nuts and bolts all along in the front, and that was nice, but it took up a lot of useful space where I could be putting tools and things that I work with. So you'll find that I've got them over here against the wall, and that way they're a reference, they're there, I can use them you know, pretty quickly and easily, it's not too far, uh, but it doesn't take up all that useful tool real estate. I found that my little uh, soldering station was not getting the real estate that it needed. One more thing before I take you in up close, we're gonna do the Matthias test. What's the Matthias test? What are you even talking about? If you don't know who Matthias Wandel is, or Wandel, I think he's in Canada. He's a woodworking guy, I really love the tips and things. I use some of the tips that he did uh, for glue joints and gap glue joints and what's stronger and not stronger. So anyway, this is the Matthias test. You always build something and it'll jump up on it like that. You don't hear it budge or crack. And it'll usually jump up like that really hard on it just to show that it's built strong, it's built to last. So it passed the Matthias test. I think I'm bigger than he is. So all the better passing grade. <laughs> so getting up to it, you can see that I've cut notches in the 4x4s. The way that I did that is I just took a speed square and then ran the saw along that, set the depth as uh, the depth of a 2x4, so they're just nice and flush. So I filled these full of glue and then I used outdoor heavy duty Torx uh, screws that were 2.5 inches deep or 2.5 inches long. So you can see I've got one going this way and then I've got one going this way and another one going this way. So I've got them sticking out here and here on this one and then kind of a similar thing now why did I have this one so far back everybody puts them up right here when you look at the 
lip of the free countertop that I got, I wanted a little bit of room to be able to clamp with. So I set this one recessed, and then I also set this one a little recessed. I don't want to bang my shin on it, I want it further back. I set the height to a little over a foot, because most toolboxes are a foot. And so I can fit things underneath it there. And then I ran the plywood, and uh, you'll notice that the board on the back side here, it's pretty far back to give support, so I could do a little cantilever off the back. I'm going to have some things get lost and fall behind there. I'll figure that out later. Uh, but it gives a lot of good storage space down there. And then as far as this goes, this was in the uh, Sheriff's Department Volunteer uh, Clubhouse. They were going to use a bunch of uh, abandoned cabinets and things uh, to go out of a medical center. They are going to throw them away, so they held on to them. They were going to throw them away, so then I got them when I was helping them clean up. So the countertop curves up at the back. And then there's a gap because of the concrete from the foundation. You can see how the foundation sticks out. So it's kind of custom built to fit where it goes and what it's used for. It's very custom. So I got a gap where I can store plywood. Um, I've got some cabinet doors and things I need to process and do some things with. But I put a 2x4 on the wall. And the 2x4, although it's a little bit warped there at the end, for the most part it's very level with the top of this. So I only screwed the plywood in there, it's just at six inches. And so that way, I wanted to have it six inches because it seems like, you know, your radio, your battery charger, your soldering station, everything's about six inches. So I wanted a good six inch shelf. And I'll probably carry that theme on going up the wall. This is screwed into the studs on either end. I have one power outlet there, I have another power outlet on the other side of the garage over there, that's about it. I really like the way that turned out. Um, the vise, I've got the vise, the three points uh, are set in the corner so that you can set it to hang off this way or this way. That was what the priority was there and the thinking behind it. Uh, I've got my bow lube on top of the drill press and I've got my drill bits all ready to go right there. So if I need to punch a hole in something, I can. Uh, what I don't have here is a little whisk broom. I need to have a little whisk broom dustpan action going on. I don't have that yet. When I built this, um, these were warped, and so I had to really work with them. Uh, these were not warped. They were really straight, but when you add this into it, uh, it really adds a challenging dynamic. Um, also, I wanted this up off the floor. You can see where there's been some water damage or mechanical damage or something to it. So I wanted to have some pressure treated blocks underneath of that. So I had this set up here. Um, the people that did the concrete floor in this garage, um, bless their hearts, they do it for a living, but it just turned out very uneven and water damaged and soft spots. And I had to grind it as a process of grinding it and the soft spots from getting rain on it. And look how deep these are, they're huge. I mean, they're like caster canyons. <laughs> That's a clever little name. Anyway, long story short, it wasn't very even, so I had to jack it up with some uh, paint stir sticks and uh, put the blocks in. By the time I got all that done and everything screwed in and I got the screws screwing this to this, uh, somehow I got a little out of level and so I had to add some plywood on top of there. I was off three quarter inch, so I just used three quarter inch ply. I had that on hand, got that done. See the little bolts and the overhang from the vise. Now if you bang on this hard enough, it's going to break the countertop, but you'd be hard pressed to do that. You know, I usually don't hit stuff that hard. I had this mounted in a, a countertop basically just like this for about 10 years, and I just had the countertop piece sitting on top of the workbench, and that way I could take it off and set it up and take it off and set it up. I may reinforce this all the way to the floor, in which case you can just wail and bash on it to your little heart's content. Um, but I just haven't, I just got everything set up as it is now. I like having the little overhang there for now. Uh, when I was building it, I just did some marks on the ends uh, just to show where everything was going to end and land. This is about 30 inches. How high is this workbench? Height's up to you. Um, this is at my waist. My belt buckle, if you look at my belt buckle, is right on top. That's where I like my workbench to be, is right about uh, belt buckle height. A lot of people, like woodworkers, that really lean into it and are bending over and planing and stuff, they really like it to come to the middle of your pinky. So measure what that is and that's how high your workbench should be. If you're a mechanic, do it at your belt buckle. If you are a woodworker, uh, do it mid-pinky if you have your arms straight down.
uh, I took a tripod, uh, busted one of the legs off and had to replace it anyway, so I kept the other two and kept this whole big long thing here so that way I can turn the crank. I cut the corners off with a bandsaw so that I can clear the handle. But what's nice about this is when you put the camera in there, I flip out the viewfinder, tip it this way, and I can just uh, put something right there and be able to film it really easily. Oh my gosh, so nice to have a workbench again. I spent two months without having a workbench. I've been using the countertop piece that I did have the vise secured to, and it just does not cut it. You see the holes, one, two, three. Is it belt buckle height? No, it's a little too high, and it showed. It's about, this is about, uh, belt buckle height right here and then plus a little and this was just a little too high find you're uh, working with your elbows in the workbench all the time Having to reach up to get to stuff way. That's my workbench and I'm sticking to it No, if there's any improvements or something, I'll do it but Like I say I did all I did glue in the joints and then screwed all of them um, as far as the way I did the shelf in the bottom these are cut in. You can see where this is cut in. It's supported really well across the front and the back to match where these are. So, and then I just did a board from here to here. I discovered these cool new drill bits that, uh, they're probably not new. But I just, it's new to me. So I got this, uh, countersink. See all these are countersunk. Instead of using angle brackets, I decided to just use the, the long uh, outdoor screws. Uh, how long? Three and a half inches. They're pretty hardcore, but you have to countersink it to get it in there. Same thing with doing the screws through this material, whatever this uh, processed, heavily man-made stuff is. I had to count. It's nice to have drills that are set up. That one's set up to send the screws in. It's an uh, impact one. This one's set up to drill. And then I got another one set up with a Phillips. Uh, I found having three of them running really helped this to come along faster. So when you get something going like this, you just there's no limit to the amount of interruptions that you can have and things that slow you down. This is my Wednesday video because I spent all I spent like six hours working on this thing, uh, this jump start kit last night, and I don't feel comfortable posting that because it just I didn't I don't have anything nice to say about it, so don't don't say anything at all. <laughs> Maybe we'll post that later, I don't know. But uh, anyway, Wild Card Wednesday, we're doing the workbench. It's Wild Card Workbench Wednesday. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.